Preparing data correctly is probably the number one success factor for anyone who wants to report or analyze on anything in Excel. If we get the layout wrong, it means that we'll be constantly fighting Excel. We'll have to rely on advanced formulas. We'll be creating a lot of helper columns and maybe even duplicating data. But if we get the layout right, it makes Excel a lot easier to work with. I used to look at people who could write advanced formulas and I was jealous of their abilities. But I soon learned that actually, if I structured data the right way, I didn't need to rely on those advanced formulas. Being able to unpivot data is one of the key transformations we can make to get our data into the correct layout. And we can use Power Query for this. It's an easy transformation to make. And that's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. So let's start with a basic example. Here we have a customer, a product, and a January, February, and March column. Now ideally, we want those month names to be in a separate column and then a single value column. So to do this, I'm going to start by changing this into a table. I'll select a cell inside the range, press Control and T. My data range does have headers, so I'll click OK on that. And then I'm going to call my table TBL Sales Data. Next, I'll load this table into Power Query. So with a cell selected, I'll click on Data and then go to From Table Slash Range. You'll notice in the formula bar, the Power Query has added those three columns as hard-coded text within the code. Now we don't want this because if we get an April or a May column, that means that our data won't update correctly. So I'm going to delete the change type step, and now we need to unpivot our data. And the key thing is that we don't want to hard code any of the column names into our query that might change. So in this scenario, we want to select the customer and product columns, and then go to transform and unpivot other columns. So when we do that, you'll see in the code only the customer and product columns have been hard coded in there. The attribute and the value columns are the columns that have been created by Power Query. Okay, now all we need to do is to tidy this up. Attribute we can call month, value I'm fine with, and then let's just apply our data types. So I'll click on customer, hold shift and click on value, and then go to detect data type. My value, let's change that to a currency. Place that current step. And then we can close and load that back into Excel. So home, close and load two. I'll select a table on a new worksheet and click OK. Fantastic, our data has now been correctly unpivoted. From this, we can easily use formulas or pivot tables because our data is now correctly laid out. Right, let's move on to example number two. In example two, we have a customer and product columns as before, and we now have value and unit columns. But this time we have two columns for January, two columns for February, and two columns for March. So how do we unpivot these so that we have one column for the months, one column for the units, and one column for the values. So again, I'll convert this into a table. I'll press Control T. My table still has headers. I'll click OK, and I'll call this TBL Sales Data 2. Then I'll go to Data and select from Table slash Range. Let's delete the Change the Type step again to make sure that those column headings are not hard-coded into our M code. Then again, we'll select the customer and product columns, go to transform, unpivot columns and unpivot other columns. At this stage, we have over normalized our data because we now have values and units in a single column. So here, 122 is the value and 101 is the units. 
we can't add these numbers up for them to mean anything. We need to have separate columns for values and for units. So with the attribute column selected, we're going to select split column from the transform ribbon. And I want to split by delimiter. In this scenario, the delimiter is a space character and I'm happy to split at each occurrence of that delimiter. Then I'll click OK. So that's now split. So we've got January and value in January and units. Now we can re-pivot on the attribute dot two column. So I'll select that column and then go to pivot column from the transform ribbon. It brings up this window that asks, where are the values? All my values are in my value column. From there, I can click OK. That's now re-pivoted my data so that I have a value and a units column. I'll change attribute to month. I'll apply the data types. So value should be a currency. Units can be a whole number. Then we can close and load that back into Excel. Home, close and load, close and load to. I can put that on a new worksheet in a table. I'll click OK. Perfect, we now have our data in the correct layout. Right, it's now time for example three, and this is a very common data layout, which causes us huge amounts of problems if we just try and use a pivot table or formulas. In this layout, we have multiple header rows. So we have customer and product, then we have value and units, and they are both contained under January, which is a merged cell. We have the same for February and the same for March. In this scenario, I'm going to use a named range. So I'm going to select all of my data here. And I'm just going to call this sales data. And just as we did with tables, we can also load named ranges into Power Query. So I'll select data and then from table slash range. You can see in the applied steps window that we don't just have the change type step, but we also have a promoted header step. We need to remove both of those. So now you can see that in that header row, we have null for columns one and two. Column three says January, but column four says null. So that was the merged cell. So we now separate the merged cell so that the value only exists in the first cell. Because of this layout, we can't unpivot it in this format. Now it would be great if they were a fill across option so that we could take January and fill it across into column four, February and fill it across into column six. But unfortunately, there isn't one. Instead, we have to use a transpose transformation. So from the transform ribbon, I'll click on transpose. From there, with column one selected, I can click fill and then fill down. We now need to merge column one and column two into a single value. So I'll select column one and column two and then I can click Merge Columns. It asks me what separator I want. I'm going to select a pipe separator, and I'm okay with that being called Merged. Okay, so column one and column two are now merged together into a single column, which means that when we transpose back, we now have a header row that we can use. First of all, we just need to replace that pipe symbol in our column one and column two. So I'll select those, go to replace values, and we'll change that pipe symbol back to an empty value. Perfect, from there, we can use the first row as headers. And now we're in the position that we can unpivot our data again. So with the customer and product column selected, I'll go to unpivot, unpivot other columns. The attribute column, we want to split that by the pipe symbol. So let's recognize that. So the custom separator as a pipe, I'll click OK on that. And now again, we can re-pivot on attribute dot two. So with that selected, I'll go to the pivot column option in the transform ribbon. 
and I'll select my value column as being my value column. So here are my values here. And then I'll click OK. If I come back to my steps, you'll notice that when I promoted the headers, it automatically applied the change type step. So I do need to delete that. I'll delete that step. Click through to make sure there's no other issues caused by that. And there's not, so that's good. And finally, we can apply our data types. I'll select all those columns. Go to detect data type. So value should be a currency. Units can be a whole number and attribute one should be called month. From there, we can go to home, close and load, close and load two. Let's load it to a table on a new worksheet and then click OK. Perfect. It's now in the format that we need once again so that we can easily use this with formulas or pivot tables. Learning to unpivot in Excel is critical to our ability to handle data efficiently and to work efficiently. If we can get this right, it means that we can use formulas in the simplest way. We can use pivot tables in the simplest way. And thankfully, it's Power Query that gives us the ability to make these transformations easily. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.